Yes, sir. We live, man. Y'all know what time it is, man. We finna talk about five key takeaways from the 49ers. Where they at? Got some Tom Brady news, Jimmy Garoppolo, Trey Lance, all that good stuff. The receivers, all that and more. So keep it locked right here. Crop Talk TV. Let's go. Intercepted. It is picked off by Aaron Crocker. Over midfield. He'll run it all the way into the end zone. Touchdown. Crop Talk TV podcast. podcast. What's good, my people? We got a lot to talk about, don't we? What's up with this Tom Brady news, man? 49er takeaways. Here we go. So let's get started. And, you know, a lot of times I like to let you guys kind of drive the conversation. I usually will have five takeaways that I want to talk about. But right now, there's a lot going on. And I and I guess I'll kind of let some people filter in here and jump right into it, man. But aloha. What up, Sean? Hope everybody is good. Hope everybody's having a great day. A blessed day. What is it? Thursday? I don't even know what day is this. Kyle Shanahan is a moron, but it's not because of the. So, so talk to me. Why? Why is Kyle Shanahan a moron? I'm pretty sure that you meant to say Kyle Shanahan is a moron, but it's not just because of the Adam Brady news, the Tom Brady news. I feel you. Okay, so I, I got I got some takeaways on the Tom Brady news. I got some takeaways. And some of my takes I might try to save for Locked On 49ers. Make sure you guys listen to Locked On 49ers. Make sure you guys listen to Locked On NFL Draft. And make sure you guys subscribe and like this video and this channel. I'm tired of looking back at Tom Brady. You know, I I, I was wondering. I'm like, where is this even coming from? And I see the article out and I read it. And I'm like, okay. And it gets to a certain section Man, I should have it up in front of me. But it got to a certain portion of it, and it basically said there was a key thing. There was a key thing that it said. Look, I just heard about the Brady News. So the key thing, or I don't even want to say key, but weird. I felt like, and I don't know about how y'all felt, but I felt like Tom Brady was somewhat declining, right? I mean, it, it just looked like it was kind of on a downward trajectory. That's without me looking at the numbers and everything, just what it looked like. And then you see in the article, the statistics kind of supported that theory that this is probably the worst Tom Brady, not even probably, this was the worst Tom Brady that we had ever seen. All right. Like that's, that's a fact. Now, some people will say, well, it's because of the receivers that he had, you know, or lack thereof. Uh, nobody was really making plays like that. You know, they traded for Muhammad Sanu. That didn't help. They had uh, Edelman, but he was kind of hurt or dropping a lot of passes, whatever it was, Nikhil Harry. He was a rookie. He was in and out of the lineup. Uh, you had Gronkowski. I guess he was supposed to be on his last leg, but shoot, he's playing now. Um, there was a lot going on, but just even then, you just look at it and it's like, man, like this is this is not Tom Brady. I know there are a lot of people that are like, man, like the the, the weapons around him and stuff. But I'm like, I'm, I never felt like Tom Brady had great weapons outside of the year with um, with Randy Moss, and then obviously you know Gronkowski who was also on that team, but kind of outside of that, like everybody else was, I, I thought it was like the, the system kind of made guys good. And for whatever reason, it wasn't working that year. So Tom Brady kind of looked like he was a little bit on the downslide, J- just, you know, just a little bit. Didn't look like Tom Brady. And you have the 49ers, and obviously he's going to become a free agent. And then you read this article and he basically is like, I want to be a 49er. You know, I want to be a 49er. But you have to look at it from the 49ers perspective as well, because you had a Jimmy Garoppolo who really missed the first year that he was supposed to be with the 49ers, got injured in week three. And then he played all of 2019 and played well. And you could see him getting better and better as the season went on. Now, what happened in the Super Bowl or in the playoffs? I don't know. It was a little weird, right? Uh, Weird games. But... You could see, like, okay, Jimmy Garoppolo is trending in the right direction where you have Tom Brady who's kind of trending in the wrong direction a little bit. And even when you look at that article, even with Tom Brady, like I said, kind of trending downward, Jimmy trending upward with what you think he could be, 
the article said that the 49ers thought Tom Brady was better. They just didn't think it was like a huge difference, right? Like that's what they were saying. Like, is it enough of a difference between Tom Brady possibly declining? Is it, is it enough of a difference to give up on Jimmy Garoppolo, who, again, the first year is supposed to play with the 49ers towards ACL right away. And then the next year started off slow, got his feet under him, started getting better and better as the year went on. And I think most people logically would think, well, Jimmy Garoppolo is only going to get better. He's going to continue to get better. Where Tom Brady, even in the article, they said Tom Brady was a little bit better. They just didn't think it was a drastic difference, but they said Tom Brady was better. But you're probably thinking Tom Brady's going to continue to kind of decline. That's what you would think in theory, right? Talking about a guy who was at that time probably entering his, I don't know, 30, 42nd season or whatever it was, 43rd season, 40, 43 years old. So you look at all that, and, and, and I think it's easy in hindsight to kind of go back to the whole, you know, well, they're stupid for passing on Tom Brady. And I, I do think that there were people at the time that were like, they should get Tom Brady. I'm going to tell you what, there were a lot more people that were against it. And me, I didn't feel any type of way either way. I always try to look at it from the organization standpoint. I think from their standpoint, it was easy to see that, hey, Jimmy's younger. We think he's trending in the right direction. We're just coming off of a Super Bowl appearance with him. Uh, we feel like we can get bit more out of him. He's not even a full year removed from his torn ACL. Like He's just going to continue to grow in the offense and do better. And how could you not think that at the time? Now, clearly... The season started. Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt. You see how it starts this year. It doesn't look pretty. Tom Brady is like back up on top. It's, I don't know, it, it's crazy, but I think it's easier in hindsight to say, oh, they're stupid and, and Shanahan was stupid and he should have gotten Tom Brady. Now, I was somewhat critical of Kyle and John on this whole thing, but not, not just because of that. To me, it was like, Overall, when you kind of look back on just the decisions that they've made to put themselves in the situ in the position that they are, like that was the part that was tough for me. Uh, and I tweeted it after the Super Bowl because you look at Patrick Mahomes, you look at and uh, uh, you look at Mahomes, you look at uh, Tom Brady, and they're playing in the Super Bowl, and I'm just like the 49ers. I mean, we're, we're four years in with Jimmy Garoppolo and still don't really know what we have. And, I mean, the play is kind of up and down and there's, like, weird moments and good moments and then whatever moments. And I, I it, it all looked kind of all over the place. And I'm like, you know, at the end of that, I don't make any decisions for the 49ers. I talk on a podcast and I try to get, like, bring a different perspective for y'all. But the people that make the decisions, y'all made the decisions to not go with these other scenarios and you wrote with this and it hasn't worked, right? So again, we can look back in hindsight and say, well, should have drafted Mahomes. And I think uh, Kyle Shanahan did a great job of saying, well, nobody really looked at Mahomes as a top five pick. And that's what the 49ers are picking. They were picking number two overall, traded back number three. Nobody viewed Mahomes as that. So it, it, it's tough. It's tough when you look back on it, but I'm, I'm not going to kill. And I know it's a polarizing article out there right now. I'm not going to kill Kyle Shanahan or John Lynch for the decision to stay with Jimmy Garoppolo because I get it. I get it. And for all the reasons that I've kind of already explained. So welcome y'all. Welcome. Welcome to Croc Talk TV. Make sure if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, hit that like button, all that good stuff. Uh, Shanahan will be on the hot seat this year. If this team does not make it to the playoffs. I agree. I agree. hundred percent. John Lynch is getting fired, in my opinion. The only hope I have is Lance development, even if it's on limited plays in the game. This year is F playoff wise. I, I think I think that's a bit of a overreaction. 49ers are two and one right now, and I agree in the sense of I don't know exactly what the 49ers are. I agree with you from that standpoint, but I don't think it's time to hit the panic button on the team that is two and one. You know, why Why can't they beat the Seahawks? Why can't they beat the Cardinals? Why can't they come out of that going into the bye of 4-1? You know what I'm saying? Like, and they'll be good in, in good position. Now, I'm not saying they win those games. Matter of fact, if you guys listened to the last, uh, most recent episode of Locked On 49ers, I actually uh, 
predicted that the 49ers would lose to the Seahawks, but not even so much about because of how the 49ers are playing. I just think the 49ers historically have trouble with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. So for me, it's really hard for me to, with confidence, say 49ers are going to beat the Seahawks. Because to this point, it hasn't mattered how bad the Seahawks are going into that game, how good they are going into that game. More times than not, they come out on top regardless. I thought last year, 49ers were going to dominate them. And they and the Seahawks dominated them. And then knocked Jimmy out the out the uh out the game. And then whatever else happened, I'm just like, golly, like that's our chance. So I look at it this year, and I think that the 49ers are the better team than the Seahawks. I don't think there's any, but the 49ers got to get over some kind of like mental hurdle, mental hump that they got going on with Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll. So I can't with confidence say that the 49ers should win. But yeah, I, I'm not going. Uh, this year, play like playoffs is early in the 49ers are two and one. So I can't, I can't say that. And I've seen that. I've seen like people, this team, this team, like we don't know what this team is. Matter of fact, you go back to 2019, they started weird, just like they started weird this year. They played Tampa Bay week one. They, Jimmy threw a pick six and really 49ers won because they had two pick sixes. Like that was, that's what won the game. They had two pick sixes of Jameis Winston who threw 30 picks that year. Right, that wasn't a very encouraging win. It was kind of weird. Then they played the Bengals. They dominated the Bengals, destroyed them. But the Bengals are kind of like the Lions of this year, where they were just a bad team. So 49ers dominated for the most part the Lions game. They dominated the Bengals game. And then week three they played Pittsburgh. I was at the game. It looked weird. 49ers offense turned the ball over five times. <laughs> they played against Mason Rudolph. You know what I'm saying? Like so. Like that looked weird. They started off three and zero, and obviously, and I mean, eventually started off what seven and zero, eight and zero. But the the start to that season was very weird. I would say most people, if you pulled a majority of people after week three, two thousand nineteen, year before I went to the Super Bowl, more people would say that the 49ers were not going to the playoffs than that they are, because it did not look pretty. If you had to guarantee, like, if you had to put all your money on, or if you had to put money on one side, 49ers going to the playoffs 2019 after three weeks or not going, most people would probably say would not because it did not look pretty. It looked weird. Now, they came out of a bye. They played against the Browns, destroyed them. Uh, then they played the Rams, destroyed them. And even that Rams game, I want to say, if my memory serves me correct, 49ers won 20-7. Uh, to 7. And it was weird. At the goal line interception, if you stopped the Rams on the goal line, uh, some other stuff fumbled, like some other weird stuff. And it was like the defense played extremely well, but the offense was kind of clunky. It did not look pretty. So I, I think there's a lot of overreaction and people putting a little bit too much into three games that the 49ers have played in three games where, you know, they could be 3-0, but they're 2-1, and that is not the worst thing in the world. It's not. Go through. I appreciate everybody sitting here right now. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Crack the voice of the voice of reason. Hey, I try to just again, I just try to bring a little different perspective and things that be going through my mind. It's a cool thing about being able to have your own YouTube channel. And I, you know what? I want to give you guys the opportunity. If you want to, this would be there. You can come on as well and kind of speak your mind a little bit on, you know, just what you're thinking about the 49ers and the current situation. Any questions y'all have, man, make sure you guys uh, shoot them in here. Let's see, Dolphins fan here trying to get inside information on how high the Niners pick we on will be overreactions across the league after every loss for all fan bases. Great content and insight. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, shout out to the Dolphins, man. See what they, they got going on. Man, got Tua. Got Tua hurt. But, yeah, a lot of overreactions, man. After I, I don't know where the 49ers to be where you guys would pick with the 49ers draft pick. But I still think 49ers are a playoff team. I think 49ers are a playoff team. Now, we'll see what happens after the next two games. I might be singing, singing a different tune, but I don't see why the 49ers couldn't beat those two teams. I'm not saying they will. I don't see how they couldn't. Let's say they drop one of those games, right? You drop one of the two games uh, to Seattle and, and uh, Arizona. So you, you win one of them. You're still three and two going into the bye. You come out of it. If you beat Indianapolis, you're four and two. You know what I'm saying? So 
I think the 49ers are fine. Again, am I extremely confident with where they're at? No, I think it looks weird. <laughs> but I wouldn't panic right now. Got my dog Roscoe's coming on. Cry, can you hear me? Oh, I only got my headset on. Oh, my bad, man. Yo. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, all right. So I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to disagree with you on this time. Oh no, you're really low. I don't think I don't know if anybody else like you're like super super low. Okay, hold on, hold on, real quick. You hear me now? Is it better? Got you. Right, let's go. Yeah. All right. So I have to disagree with you on this Tom Brady thing. First off, uh, the the year that Tom Brady, the year that Tom Brady was coming off was two, two, 2019 season. He did not have Gronkowski on that team. He had that dude named Izzo as his tight end. And uh, Izzo is, I don't even know if Izzo is still in the league right now. And then you had, then you, remember they started off with, uh, Gordon, A.B., they had that squad, but, you know, Gordon fell off, A.B. fell off. Uh, Tom Brady actually started out really good that year. And then the whole offense fell off because they had inconsistent weapons coming in and out that offense. And you ended up with Jacoby Myers. You had Nikhil Harry coming off of IR plan. And, again, like I said, you had Izzo, you had Edelman who led the league in drops. And so you had, a, like, a flow of that talent at, at receiver. And Brady haven't had that type of talent since he had Kimbrough Tompkins, which I know you remember, Kimbrough yep. Tompkins and Dobbs at, at receiver. But with Kimbrough Tompkins and Dobbs, he at least had, I think he, at least he had Gronk and Aaron Hernandez. But, you know, Brady threw 25 touchdowns, 10 picks. Everybody thought he was washed that year as well. So you come in, you got to, like, if you watched every Brady game, which I did because I'm a Brady fan, even though I'm a Niner fan, I seen that okay, dude. Like, there's no separation. There's uh, they can't catch. They're dropping passes. They weren't doing anything right, and he didn't have a tight end to throw the ball to. So, if you look at everything, you I couldn't I couldn't fully say that Brady was washed. And regardless of all of that, if the greatest quarterback of all time wanted to play on your squad, I mean, my God, you got, especially how Jimmy Garoppolo played in those playoffs. I would oh. think you would wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me okay. let me finish. I, okay. I would think you would want to have them on your squad. Now, the, the the reason why people are backlashing, and I think you touched on this a little bit, it's the overall scheme of things. When you pass on uh when you when you originally got a chance to keep Kaepernick, okay, we can make we can make a uh, an excuse for them not wanting to keep Cap. Okay, cool. But then you neglect to look at Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes coming out in that draft. Then you enter 20, 2020 season and you pass on Brady and you keep Jimmy Garoppolo. So I think the backlash that everybody is tripping about is just the overall decision making of things. Right. And, and, and I agree from that standpoint. Uh, the, the part that I, I'll try to kind of give my perspective is I, this year, right, the Jets, they had the number two overall pick and everybody was saying Zach Wilson the, you know, draft Zach Wilson, he's the guy, yada, 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 can't, no matter what, number two overall pick. And I was saying, I don't think the Jets should draft Zach Wilson. I think they should keep Sam Darnold and build a great team around him. If you want to move back a little bit, trade out of that spot, collect some picks to help you add some more weapons to that team or, you know, some guys on defense, whatever the case is, but build around him, you know, because if I'm Robert Sala, I don't want to go into the season – my my rookie year as a coach with a rookie quarterback. I just don't. I don't want to deal with those ups and downs. I don't want to go through that. All right. And looking back at and we see how it's turned out right now. And we 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 gotta pray that Robert Solid makes it through the year. All right. But then you look at uh the, the 49ers situation with Kyle Shanahan and his rookie year. Okay. Rookie head coach. Do I want to attach myself to one of these young quarterbacks that could be a wild card or do I want to bank on the fact, even though they didn't do it, do I want to bank on the fact that, hey, I can go and get Kirk Cousins? And I know Kirk Cousins. I know he can play in it. I know. So let me do it. And like he said, build on this defense, which was historically bad for 49ers defense. That was maybe the worst defense I've seen from the 49ers. Matter of fact, they were so bad that 
when they played against the Buffalo Bills, I turned the game off. It was sickening to watch. I remember right? it. I remember that and, year. Yeah, it was bad. And so you look at Kyle, and he's looking at that, and he's like, all right, I, I, I can bring in Cousins next year, and let me build up some pieces around to, to get a strong defense and build – the foundation of what the defense is going to be. So he got, you know, two guys who Solomon Thomas didn't work out. Ruben Foster didn't work out. But I, I could see the direction that he was going in. I think in hindsight, though, you look back and you say, well, should have got Mahomes. Should have got Watson, right? Like, should have got one of those guys. Which I actually had the 49ers taking uh, Mahomes in the second round. So that lets you know where people thought Mahomes was kind of going. But he was my QB1 in that class. I just didn't hear a lot of them or whatever. But – it's tough, man. So then you look at the the whole thing with with uh, Tom Brady, and you say, "Well, it's Tom Brady." Like, so no matter what, because he's so great, you should overlook everything else and just say, "You know, we're going to take him." And I disagree. If it looks like, and you watch the film or whatever, that he's maybe on the decline, and he is old. I mean, we're talking about he's like forty two years old, but I got a young quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo who. We just went to the Super Bowl with, and this was his first full season ever in his career. He's coming off of a torn ACL. I believe that there's more there and that he's going to get better. Now, the issue is he didn't, but Tom Brady did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, I see the logic and I see the thinking. I, I see how they think. Now, at the end of the day, they were wrong. So I think that's a tough spot. So, that's so tough Okay. Spot. Okay, so I, I'm glad you brought up Sam Darnold. It actually, I'm I'm gonna use that against you first. But but let, let's look at 2017, right? You can't go in guaranteeing that you're gonna get Kirk Cousins. There is no guarantee. Things happen through a whole year, and I said this on Spaces. The Niners would have had to outbid Minnesota for Kirk Cousins. Kirk, they gave Kirk Cousins a guaranteed contract. They gave him all his money. The Niners would have had to beat that, and that's pretty tough to beat a guaranteed contract. So that's the thing I would say. It's just there's no guarantee you're going to be able to get somebody, which was why they decided to go get Garoppolo, who was what? Unknown. He only started, what, two games? He was unknown. So I I don't like that excuse that they didn't want to attach themselves to the unknown when they a guy who started two professional games, and it wasn't even two full pro, uh, two full professional games uh, and, and they decided to take a chance on him, but you could have took a chance on Mahomes or Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson. I mean, he was coming off on a stellar career. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see how you pass up somebody like uh, Deshaun Watson, but let's talk Sam Darnold. I agree with you. The Jets shouldn't have never went off uh, Sam Darnold. The re if you look at that 2000 and uh, what year was that 2020 Jets team, what did Sam Darnold have to throw to? No, I, I agree. No, I'm with no, you, yeah, but 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm pushing it back on you because Tom Brady had the same issue, he had no weapons. Sam Darnold had no weapons. They go to a different team, they look much better than what they were. Everybody, like, oh man, I. I, I I misjudged on this. I misjudged on that. Yes, Sam Darnold is younger, but at the end of the day, people misjudge because they they looked at a quarterback and ju judged them for the weapons they didn't have. Right. So it, it's tough though because we've seen we've seen Brady, and I get it in theory because of the results of it, but those were guys that you know he he had played with that style of receivers before and had success. Like I get but, it. The but, results weren't the results weren't not, what not that level. Well I would say this. I, I cause I, I you are right in a sense, but it it's the he didn't have a consistent flow of those receivers. Those receivers was the, the receivers was in and out. Remember, they started with Josh Gordon, A B, and Edelman. That's not how they finished the season. They finished right. the season with Jacoby Myers, <laughs> Izzo, <laughs> Edelman, and uh, and Nikel Harry. So he didn't he didn't have like a lot of and you notice know what a lot of Brady what a lot of Brady's greatness is is chemistry. He has to have chemistry with his receivers. He has to trust in his receivers. And you know the Patriots' offense is hard because Chad Johnson couldn't 
couldn't figure it out because what he needed consistency. He needed that chemistry with his players and he needed his players to read him and him read his players. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. I, I think, uh, I, and, and again, these are, these are professionals. You have Kyle Shanahan, you have his whole squad looking at all the film, looking at everything. And you somehow say, Oh, he's barely better than Jimmy Garoppolo. And again, you seen the playoffs. We seen the playoffs. I had to stop. I, me, Shanahan, had to stop throwing the ball because my quarterback was trying to throw the game away against the Vikings. And then I, I don't really fought him against the uh, Green Bay Packers. We just was like, oh, I'm just, you know, uh, we got Mozart going, so we only only passed eight times. It's, yeah. I mean, I guess it's water under a bridge now, but I. I look back on it, and again, I always try to look at it through the coach's eyes and the organization's eyes. And looking at it from that standpoint, I think you can justify at the time sticking with Garoppolo, who, again, was coming off of a torn ACL, still had statistically a terrific season, and you went to a Super Bowl with him. That's not to say that you couldn't do better. And obviously, even Kyle Shanahan, or at least in the article, says they felt like Brady was better just not to the extent of uh, giving up on what giving up on what Jimmy potentially could be at a much younger age. Oh, well, b- before I go crack, I just want to ask you this. How do the 49ers get in front of this? Oh, I mean, you got to you got to hit on on uh Trey Lance. But but I'm saying like you know how the media is going to ask some questions. They're going to ask Kyle Shanahan like, how do you feel like he should answer the questions and stuff? Well, once, you start winning, once you start winning, those questions stop, right? I mean, and I don't want to say Agreed. start winning because they're two and one. But once, and again, like a lot of these questions have come because Garoppolo's play has kind of been up and down. But once Garoppolo is playing well and the t- and it looks good, then the questions stop, <laughs> you know? The mm-hmm. real questions stop. All right. But, Thanks, all right, Croc. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. All right, bro. All right. Here we go. We got the next speaker. Yo. Yo, what's up, Croc? Oh, man. I'm chilling, man. How you doing? Uh, Pretty shitty. Pretty shitty. But oh, uh, why, one thing why, I will. Why? Uh, I, I just don't. Uh, I don't like this team. I'm going to feel good in a few hours, though. I'm going to be with my girl. It's the weekend. But, um, you know, one, one thing that is, is just alarming to me, right, is that I, I think that no one realizes that Shanahan – he isn't learning from his mistakes. You know, I, I, I understand you though. And your point of, of, you know, I, I personally don't think that Tom Brady would have changed anything either. Uh, Tom Brady to me is, is, as great as, as the, the story is of Tom Brady. That doesn't change the fact that we're very injured in, in 2020. It doesn't change the fact that if you compare the roster of the Buccaneers to ours, that roster is star studded compared to ours that keeps getting hurt. They, no they matter what you want to say. Playoffs. I want to say in the NFC Championship, then Brady throw like three, yeah, three picks, and the team was able to kind of overcome it. So I think that, yeah, yeah, those things kind of get overshadowed because ultimately, at the end of the day, it didn't matter. They won that game and won the Super Bowl, but mm-hmm. uh, it's not like it was just like completely lights out, but definitely playing. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, it's just, it's just, I, I don't get people that they don't want to look at those kind of things when they keep bringing up Tom Brady. I don't hate Tom Brady, but I certainly don't think it would have changed anything. I think if anything, it would if he would have came here and he would have you know crapped the bed and everything. I think that people would be very shocked. But it's just the facts, people. Tom Brady is not the same if he doesn't have a consistent cast around him. And I don't think that we're the team that could be consistently healthy for him to be successful with us. I think that with the Bucks, they're more healthy than us. They have enough star uh, a star studded cast. And he's just, you know, pe- people like AB over there and everything like that, and and people later on that got there. I think that, you know, that's a completely different thing compared to if he would have came to us. Plus, I, I think the Shanahan's ego, I-, I think it's terrible, man. Like, I-, I don't see him learning from his mistakes, and and that goes for anybody in life, man. I feel so, like it, it. I have to yeah, disagree. Yeah, go, go for it. Okay, go I, for it. I have go to go disagree that he doesn't learn from his mistakes. Because mm. it does seem like certain situations that he's been in, he's tried to do things a different way, right? Look at the first year, then go after this quarterback or then go after a guy he want. This offseason, he went all in on the guy that he wanted to be able to build on. So, uh, you know, I think he did that differently. I think sometimes people 
you know, point out all oh, the the play, the play clock, the clock managing and stuff. And when it doesn't work, everybody, you know, points it out. But when it does work, nobody says anything about it. You know, so I think sometimes it's it's, it's tough when it comes to Kyle Shanahan. Uh, people always look at the times it doesn't work, how he handles things, and they don't look at the full picture of things. I mean, look at, uh, you know, Kendrick Bourne, right? People talk about how Kyle, like, oh, Kyle in his doghouse, he needs to get over his ego, yada, yada, yada. He put Kendrick Bourne in, like, and sat him down and told him, like, bro, like, you're going to get cut. Like, hey, you got to do this. You got to do that. Same talking to he gives to everybody else. And Kendrick Bourne responded well, and he ended up being a guy who, for him, had a legit, you know, career as an undrafted guy and went and got paid by New England. Um, there's been several other guys who Kyle Shanahan has challenged from that standpoint. And they have answered the bell and answered it, you know, the right way and ended up doing well with Kyle. Uh, shoots, I think Brandon Ayuk, he's a guy who's been in Kyle's doghouse and people were like, oh, he needs to coddle him. He needs to do this with him, do that with him. Well, how did Ayuk respond from, you know, the limited reps, the no targets? He had six targets last game, caught four of them, caught a touchdown. So I, I, I think sometimes we just look at it too much from just like one perspective and point out too many uh, we just want to look at the negative or times when things don't work uh, instead of the kind of full picture of it. So I think with Kyle Shanahan, you know, it's, I, I think he, I, I think, I think every situation is different. I think that's the hard thing to kind of realize. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't disagree with your points as far as what he has done before. That doesn't negate the fact that every single year in the first three rounds, he has been very inconsistent every single year. And I, I get it that McGlinchey is a somewhat starter in this league. He's look, a sorry look, pick. Look, I get it the that ers if the 49ers Joe come Williams, to McGlinchey, CJ Beathard, would get money on a, on Ambry a, Thomas. <laughs> you know, look, like I, I, yeah, go, go, no, no, I'll let you talk. I'll let every, you talk. Go ahead. Every team, every team has that. Every team, like every team has those misses. Cowboys could be kicking themselves, right? Like, shoes. they drafted Taco Charlton over uh, T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt's one of the best defenders in the NFL right now. Like, I, I feel like every team has their hits and they have their misses. And I, I want to say over just somebody – I heard Peacock on Locked On 49ers. Make sure you guys listen to Locked On 49ers. But Peacock said half, half first-rounders are good. The other half aren't. So 49ers aren't the only team that – has misses, but they also have guys that have played very well. I think some of it you kind of have to let it play out. Uh, but I think it was clear right away, like, ooh, Solomon Thomas, they might be in trouble with him. I ain't like Solomon Thomas, by the way. Uh, Ruben Foster, I thought was a really good football player, but he couldn't stay healthy, and he started doing weird stuff off the field. Okay, for, for that, for those picks, okay, I blame that Solomon Thomas pick on John Lynch. I don't care what anybody says, just it's because you go to school with the guy. I, I get it that the organization is a whole, but I'm just saying I can see in a room. I don't need to be, you know, a guy with a PhD to tell you that John Lynch probably influenced that pick the most in that entire draft. He probably said a lot of good things. The, the tape looked good, too. I'm not saying it looked bad, but, I mean, you can't predict that obviously being successful or not. But I'm just saying over time – it just it okay, but let let's just use it this draft for instance, right? Someone like Trey Sermon, I I don't hate Trey Sermon. I think that he's a he's a decent running back, you know. But let's face it, there's been way more impactful running backs that are undrafted that come to our team that are way better than him. And that and I'm not saying that that Sermon is a bad running back. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you didn't have to reach for him. You didn't have to reach for Bethard. You didn't have to reach for Joe Williams. I can keep going, but but the the point is is that every time it's somebody on the offense that is always a reach, you know, from Dante Pettis and on, it's just it's unacceptable. And just because other teams make mistakes with their picks doesn't give us the the right to make mistakes like they do. Uh, okay, you let know? me ask you a question. So after yeah. Dante Pettis's rookie year, how did you feel mm -hmm. about him? I felt like he was very. Um, it's hard to really under like. Okay, I felt optimistic given how the quarterback played with him, but I did not expect him to be in this doghouse. I was okay, really hoping know, the best for him. But, but what I'm saying is, yeah, because when you go and what is he doing guys, now? Yeah, what is he doing now? When you go and you draft guys, right? Is <laughs> is all about like the analysis of that player and what he could be, right? So when you watch Dante Pettis, 
especially that, that last half of the year after he came back from the knee injury or whatever. What did you think about what you were seeing from Dante Pettis? It's like, I don't know. It, it, it's the same thing with almost any pick that, that you see flashes in. You see, you see the potential, but that doesn't that doesn't guarantee that this guy's going to be successful or not. Okay, wait, no, you're right. All right, but well, for, yeah. for one, there, there is no guarantee for success. But two, you saw Uh-oh. the potential, right? Like you, did you see? Is it me or you? Things? What you can't hear me? Uh, hello. Yeah, you can't hear me. Oh yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. My bad. I don't All know right. if that was me or you. Go for it. Did you did you hear? I mean, did you see the? Let me make sure my mic is plugged in or something. Uh. When you watched him, did you come away with, and I'm talking about the last half of Dante Pettis' rookie year. When you watched him, did you come away with, damn, I see why they drafted him, right? I see why they traded up for him. Like, did that? Did those thoughts come when he was whooping guys? When he was whooping dudes? Uh, uh, when he was whooping dudes on the on the Bucks, right? He dogged uh, Davis, who's a big time corner now. Um, when he had over 100 yards against Seattle, at any point did you say? I see why they drafted him. Yeah. So, so, so my thing is that sometimes it, it's hard because you can, you can pick the right guy in the sense of his ability and his analysis and what we thought of him from a player perspective. But what's really hard to really judge with some of these guys is the mental aspect of it, right? Like what do these guys, how, how are they mentally? Um, how much work are they going to put in? How are they going to take to coaching? Can they grasp the offense? Like, you try to figure out those things as much as possible, but sometimes, dude, it's just it's it's tough, and you just miss on it. But on other guys, you 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 hit. So you can look at Dante Pettis, and you can say, "Damn, he, from an evaluation standpoint, he was what they wanted." But the mental part of it, the reach. And but then when you look at Debo Samuel, is like from an evaluation standpoint, it matched up, and then from the mental standpoint, it looks like he's getting it down, right? And I think that's, you know, it's like we we can't be like, well, he always misses, but then there's the Debo Samuel. Oh, he always misses, but then there's the Fred Warner. Then there's the Dre Greenlaws. Then there's the Nick Bosa, which that's not. Okay, okay, okay. But we know, but me and you both know that they their strong suit is fourth round and down. Plain and simple. I don't know why that is. I mean, you, I mean, <laughs> I don't know why that they're more successful in those rounds compared to the first three. It looks like the first three are literally – Controlled the majority of the time every year by Kyle with his reach of getting this player or that player. It, I mean, I can't see John Lynch saying, I want Joe Williams. <laughs> yeah, I can't see that, bro. I can't see him saying, I want Dante Pettis. I want CJ Beathard. You know, like, come on. Like, the, 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 the thing is, uh, it's not that I disagree with you that you have to take a chance, right? And I don't, I honestly don't even blame him for getting, for not getting Mahomes or Watson. I don't blame him for that. Because look at that entire draft. There's what what Mahomes just picked ninth ninth pick, right? You know that that is that is literally eight teams. Okay, ten. So it's like there's nine other teams that passed on him. You can't just blame Kyle for not getting him. I mean, it takes a true genius, including including the Bears, including the Browns. You know, there were Mm -hmm. other teams in there. It takes a true genius to understand that. You know, and Andy Reid is that genius. You have to give it up to him and give him his credit. You can't blame Kyle because he's not there yet. He's only like. 41 right now. I don't even remember the age he was right then and there. So it's like, I don't blame him for that. Uh, I think that's everybody else's argument for me is just that like his ego, dude, every time he's in the presser, he always has to act like he's a silver spoon privileged child, dude. Like what, why do you answer these questions as if they're trying to be disrespectful to you? I like I get it. Likes, Grant, I don't think he likes Grant Cohn. Okay. Okay. It's true. But Matt Mayoka was getting on him big time. <laughs> you know, and, and it's other times too. It's just like, like it's it just unprofessional. How come Jimmy is, is handling it way better than you are right now? Okay. Well, look at, go back. If if you remember, and again, I try to just bring up different situations. But That's go fine. back to, to John, uh, uh, Jim Harbaugh. And who mm-hmm. was and when they were asking him questions, I, I think the way he was coming off and how he was kind of looking at people, it was like kind of similar. He was, he's a little, uh, uh uh, like he would answer it weird and be like, uh, no, like, no, it's great. Like, you know, it was, I think every coach is just kind of different with how they answer questions. Look at Bill Belichick. Belichick just, someone asked him a question the other day, man, I almost fell out my seat laughing because of how he answered it. He was just like, uh, uh, and maybe you feel like, well, he's earned the right to because he's so good. 
But Damn right. some of these coaches, even uh, and this is another guy who has has a lot of success, but Mike Tomlin, like the way he answers questions sometimes. Like I I don't think there's one way. How can I explain this? I think Kyle could be irritated by some of the things and maybe hearing some of the same questions and giving answers and then the media twisting things. Maybe he needs to learn how to deal with that better because I think that uh, every team, every coach gets asked those kind of weird questions probably over and over and they get irritated with it as well. But I would say winning cures all. So if the 49ers continue to win because they're two and one right now, then I, I think, I think, uh, are these games close to for you to be satisfied? By the way, you said what for these game for these games being as close as they are? Are you satisfied with this? No, no, no. I'm not satisfied. I know, I know. So, so I get it that a win's a win, satisfied. but it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't mean that we should be satisfied just because it has a W right there. Well, they, it's too damn close. Well, I said this, and me and Peacock said this after the uh, after the game against the Eagles. And people mm -hmm. got on us about being too negative, which I didn't think we're being negative. I'll just point out, like, man, like these slow starts, uh, looks up and down. It's not very fluid or efficient. That can be a little bit of trouble against another team. And they found mm -hmm. themselves down 17 0 against the Packers. But they did come back. They did come back and take the lead, you know, ultimately lost. But man, I'm going to go with John Chapman there and say just because you start a fire, you know, and you right. take the fire out, that doesn't mean that you're a hero, Jimmy. Right. That used to be my you know, for, uh, to Tony yeah. Romo all the time. Yeah, which he put so, up a lot of more stats than Jimmy. So here, here's the here's the last question um, I have yeah. for you, real quick. If if not Kyle Shanahan, who? See, everybody everybody acts as if like just because there's nobody to replace him, that doesn't mean he shouldn't be disciplined. I get it that, that the well, straw man here mean, is mean, because, mean, because 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 like you asking that kind of question puts me into a straw man that is. Well, I don't have nobody, so that means I'm a complete idiot. It's like, no, that 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 doesn't negate the problem here. The problem is Shanahan, bro. Like, okay, even when you watch the film, the film reflects how uninspired it is. What, what, what? Jack Hammer, Jesse, Grant. I get it that, that we could watch them and just say this is how we're supposed to think. Let's just listen to them three. But it's way more people that are that are even breaking down the film and saying the same things. Like everybody's starting to get on Kyle's case and I get it that, you know, maybe you don't want to, you know, look at it right now, but I'm just saying, don't be shocked that when it's in the middle of the season, that this guy looks like he's going to be in the hot seat. I get your points. I just don't think that they're necessarily strong enough to really justify like, you know, like, I mean, if, if he beat Seattle, how would you feel about Kyle? I don't think he's going to beat Seattle, but if he did, I, I would personally think it's going to be somewhat of a last drive sort of like green bay but that i i don't see it happening i think russell is too smart to understand the secondary is garbage and i think that you know he's just going to exploit that and i think that as bad as their defense is i think that they know how to limit jimmy already hmm. and our run game is terrible kyle's play design is garbage right now and if you guys want to disagree look at the film it, there is nothing inspiring about that dude what are you talking like it 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 look it looks mediocre, bro. It looks like if the Niners can't run, they're done. <laughs> Cause Jimmy yeah. can't do nothing about it. And uh no matter what, even if me and you dis uh dis disagree on these things, I think that you know the, the, the best thing for our fan base is not to go at each other's throats. I could be very, very uh uh ignorant and start calling you uh Jimmy Stan or whatever, but I think it's better for us just to wait it out. See who's right about something, and we can all get better afterwards to see who was right about certain things, and just own up to it. You know, I was wrong about this, or I was right about this. You know, um, yeah. And you and Brian Brian Peacock are doing amazing. And what does a built bar taste like? Can you tell us that? Nah, he he has them. I, I got. I think I got to send him my address. So like, my gosh, I'm going for a run, and I always have to hear those stupid ads. That I'm just. What are these? What do these things taste listen, like? Okay, you know? listen. I hear people complain <laughs> yeah. about the ads. But you, we no, no, I don't hate them. You guys got to get your money. I get paid, all right? So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? I wish I could fast forward it. Thing, though, yeah, I and I you. do it too when I'm listening to a podcast. All you got to do is just hit, hit the little skip button. And it's I know, but forward. I'm running. You got to listen to it. <laughs> I'm running and I got to, oh, shit. Here we go with the built bars, the, his favorite 
flavors the peanut butter and <laughs> it's like oh my gosh bro every time well but uh, if, you, if you hear it enough times you'll, you'll get you some built bars ah <laughs> oh, damn all right man well either way man you have a great day croc everybody have a great weekend uh let's see what happens man and uh yeah just don't kill each other in the comments <laughs> all right, have a good one, man. <laughs> yep <laughs> um i see y'all in the comments man y'all wow I try, you know, I always want to hear different perspectives, you know, like this, this is not about me, this show, obviously I'll give my perspective on certain things, but I want, you know, I try to just, you know, just bring a different perspective than maybe what you guys hear from other people from different uh, content creators and things like that. And I appreciate everybody that's in here. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the like button, all that good stuff. We've got about 10 minutes in here, 10 more minutes. Uh, Obviously the first thing that we were talking about is is uh, the Brady Jimmy thing, and it's kind of carried over for the last forty minutes now. Let's see. Uh, somebody said, "Be enemy." That's who. I okay. Now you guys are going to kind of get on me about this, but I I have to di disagree with one thing, y'all. I have to disagree. And here's the link. You want to come on, and we can talk about it because it helps better when like it, it works better when I get to bounce these ideas off of someone else. But I don't think the 49ers secondary is bad. I know. I know. I know I'm alone on that. I know I'm alone on that. I don't think they're that bad. I, I, I think that they have played well. Um, I feel like the thing that's kind of skewed with this whole thing is that they have given up these big plays, and, 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 and that hurts. I think just in the sense of who they are, do I think they suck? No, nah, I, I don't think they suck. Got to figure out a way to limit the big plays because in 2019, and I and I don't want to, I don't want to um, keep going back to 2019, but that was the last time 49 was really relevant. Uh, 2019, they, they they limited the big plays. They had the least amount of big plays in the league. So if they can get back to that, I think they're playing well from on a down to down basis on the secondary, but got to limit that big play. Cause they've given up a little bit too much. <laughs> what up, man? What's good with you, Croc? How you been fam? Oh man, I'm chilling. What's good with you? Hey man, I, I'm actually super excited right now, bro. I've been looking into doing some things for like my, own, you know, my channel and mom's just sent me two little pieces of hot art. You know what I'm saying? She just like did that out the blue. I ain't even asked, you know what I'm saying? So, you know how it is, man. My, my, my mind's cut through, dog. Like, so if I'm cheesing the whole time, I'm just, <laughs> I mean, I'm elated mean, I mean, on that. I'm mean, elated on that one, man. I, you know, it always feel good when you get unexpected things. That's just how yeah. it works, you dig. What are we talking about today, baby? We're talking about uh, takeaways from the uh, the game? So, you know, I typically do the five takeaways, but, man, if, if there's something that you want to talk about, the floor is yours. We talked about the Brady-Jimmy thing. Uh, Shanahan mm -hmm. thing. We've talked mm -hmm. a little bit. I I just touched on the secondary, which mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. the secondary. I don't think the secondary is bad. So okay. I'm alone with I'm alone on that. Um, I see somebody in the comments say Demarco's uh, play calling is a problem. I think Demarco's been good. Maybe I'm too maybe I'm too positive. Maybe I'm too optimistic. But I think I think Demarco, uh, uh, De, uh Demico, excuse me. I think Demico's yeah. been solid. I think he's been. Yeah, I think, I think this th this is the thing that I saw. Um, Demico Ryan's has been he's been all right. I'm gonna roll with you on that. He's been cool. I I, I don't have any issues with him. Um, as far as that goes, he is learning. So people, we gotta understand something, man. We gave Salah years for him to get on track. So don't jump down Demico's throat already. And he barely three games into the season. You got to give him some time to make sure everything gets right. He's new at this. He was a linebacker's coach last year, and now, randomly, he's the D.C. And he's doing things his way. So I feel like we got to give him more time and cut him a little more slack. Um, the one thing I would say is the pass rush, bro. We got to get home. We okay. got, so got to uh, get yeah, home. Please, think, please do. Think, Enlighten me, brother. The issue with the pass rush is that it, it's going to be compared to 2019, which I think is an unrealistic standard. That's unfair. They can't yeah. do that. Uh, somebody said we look like twins. <laughs> um, I think that's a. I'm, I'm that's all right a, with that, y'all. I'm right. all right with that. If y'all tell me I'm I look like crying, man, so. uh, uh, me too, hey, why do you think I always got a hat on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Uh, wait, I got a 49 hat. Oh, 
Here we go. Try to get our 20, yeah. 20 on. Here we go. There yeah. we go. There yes, we go. sir. All right. So, um, where was I? <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, you were telling me why, about the defensive line. Okay, so the defensive line. I think sometimes, like, 49ers, we almost – like, we kind of got spoiled with the 2019 defensive line, and I think we think, like, that's the standard, and that's unfair to these guys. I think these guys are okay. I think there's two things that I've noticed right away. One, you know, I think a lot of people, we weren't getting to Aaron Rodgers. He's getting rid of the ball so quick. If if you watch, I mean, it was like his average, like getting the ball out of his hands was like two and a half seconds. So typically he's just not going to get there. um, He was 16. He was 16 of 16 when he did that. And if uh, if people look at the stats. And look at the throws. Go back. Go back and look at the throws. There were a lot of throws. It was coming out right now. A lot of quick passes, a lot of screens, a lot of things that just get the ball out of his hands right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of, oh, I'm just going to hang in there, hang in there, hang in there, hang in there, and then throw the ball downfield. Even his downfield shots was get the ball, one, two, three, boom, let it go. I mean, that ball was out of his hands quick. So yeah, I think that's was... tough. And then the other thing is, you know, we're, 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 we are we're we're are depending on, on Nick Bosa and D Ford to get pressure for us. And mm-hmm. I don't think that those guys are 100% back, right? If you look at Nick Bosa, you look at uh you look at Bosa, you look at D Ford. Those are two guys that were out by week 2 last year. And yep. they missed the entire season, then they missed a lot of offseason rehabbing, and then they tried to work back in, but remember they didn't have any live reps maybe until the week of the game. Uh, they didn't play in the preseason. Uh, their first real action was week one. So I do think the guys that we are counting on to get that pressure and, and get in opposing quarterbacks' faces, I don't think they're just – they're 100% back. So I think, again, it's it's tough when you see uh, a guy, you know, uh, Aaron Rodgers getting the ball out of his hands right now real quick. That's tough. But also, it doesn't help that, you know, uh, the, the guys that we're counting on to get pressure – they, 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 they're not back yet. Like where you would want yeah. them. If they're still, if they're still like this week eight, then yeah, it's going to continue to be a problem probably all season. Yeah. So for me, what I, I understand what you're saying, and, and I've heard several, you know, players across different sports say this with an ACL that first year back, you're not all the way back. Like you're not the same person that next year after that is where you fully recovered. Um, and, and I understand what you're saying, and I agree with you. And, yeah, I mean, it's hard to get to a quarterback in 2.5 seconds. I'm sorry. Also, um, uh, Devontae had 18 targets. The rest of the Green Bay receivers had 13. Aaron Rodgers literally said after the game, when they said, what was the game plan? He said, throw it to Tay. So you knew that that was what was going to happen. Um, as far as the DB situation, I need you to explain to me what you feel is going to be okay because I'm not trusting Buster Screen for anything, and Norman's running with punctured lungs. Like I, 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 I we only have Emmanuel Mosley and Diamond Lenore, and I love Lenore. I like how he's playing. He's going to continue to grow and come along. But I, tell me what you're thinking uh, to to give me some reassurance in the defensive backfield. Yeah, no, nah, it's tough. You know, they're, they're patching it up right now. You, you lose uh, Verrett early on, and then you have. Mosley, you know, he's coming back. I thought he played well. Uh, Lenore has filled in decently, but I do think he's profiled more as a nickel guy. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you look at the Buster uh, screen signing, and I'm curious to see what they do. You know, you lost Kawan Williams, so, you know, this was a guy to play in the slot. If I had to guess, they would like to play Norman or Kirkpatrick or whoever on the outside opposite of – uh, of Mosley and play mm-hmm. Lenore in a slot, and then maybe you can mix in Buster Screen. Uh, that's just kind of how I saw that. Uh, but you know, we'll see if if Screen just comes in and starts. But I, I would assume that Lenore is going to be there, especially if he can play. I, I could agree with that. That's that's definitely probably the best take on it. Um, you know, coming from from that aspect, I think that definitely works out well. Um, for me, the only other thing I see, man, is is. Coming up against Seattle, bro, like this is this one is going to be hard because Seattle always plays as hard. The Cardinals always play as hard. The only team in our division we seem to be able to have one up on is the Rams. And right now with the way that they're rolling, I don't know if we're going to be whooping on them like we used to in previous years. Because I'm yeah. telling you, man, I, I, 
I know I said this and, and, and Matthew Stafford is making me eat my words right now, you know, because at first I was thinking he's coming from like a losing culture. So how do you jump into being a winner when you're consistently ready to just, you know, at the end of the season, you're probably not making the playoffs. And with the way that they're running, you know, that, that matchup with them and the Cardinals this weekend says a lot for the NFC West. So, you know, when it comes to us versus the Seahawks, like that's a must win for us, but, Jerry's never lost two games in a row, um, and Russ has never lost three in a row. So some some nice something little things give. for us to look at. Something got to give, man. Yeah. Well, man, I'm going to um, get you out here. I, I'm supposed to be on another podcast, right. so I'm going right, to get brother. out here in one minute. I'm going to answer one more question. I appreciate you for coming on, dog. Yes, sir. Peace, man. Love to see All you, right. man. Uh, last, last question real quick. I'm going to answer. Somebody said, Crocky, are you becoming a Jimmy G apologist? And my response to that is now, man, like I just, I try to just look at things with a kind of a clear vision, I guess you could say. Um, I don't feel any way or the other. I mean, obviously I would love to see Trey Lance get in there. I think when it comes to Jimmy Garoppolo, it's never as bad as it seems and it's never as good as it seems. And I think some people, they look at this and they just think like the world is ending with Jimmy Garoppolo in there right now. I don't think so. I think he has to get over these slow starts, but it's been okay. I mean, I don't know. I, I do think ultimately, ideally, he gives you the best chance to win. Um, depending on how these next couple of game go, games go, you might have no choice but to get in the rookie Trey Lance. So, um, apologist or anything like that? No, nah, man. I just, you know, I just see it how I see it. Not, nothing. Not too. I'm not too emotionally. Uh, invested one way or the other. All right, so that's going to do it today, man. Appreciate you. I appreciate everybody coming in. Lock, uh, make sure you guys listen to Locked On 49ers, Locked On NFL Draft. Should I do this every day around this time? Come in, we got like 100 people in here, man. Maybe we can do this almost every day around like noon or something, or noon central, morning time, California, one uh, my time. Maybe around then we'll just come in here and just talk, man. But until then, I'll see y'all next time, man. Uh, y'all have a good one.